A leopard is one of the animal that actually has got power in terms of the strength, in terms of thinking, in terms of doing and being a leader in animals. So as we are wearing it, it's one of the things that we are saying, we are also following the leadership of the, of the leopard. We were running a long-term research project in northern KwaZulu Natal and Zululand, uh, looking at leopard biology, leopard ecology, and um, and to do that we had radio collared numerous leopards, and we soon realised that many of these cats were disappearing. Um, we couldn't understand why. Uh, some were being hunted, some destroyed by, by farmers, but but certainly not enough for the to account for the numbers that we were losing. And um, and at that time, um, Tristan Dickerson, who was uh, who was heading up uh, that uh, the field component of that study, um, heard about the Shembe Church and that leopard skins were used as a, for ceremonial purposes, essentially as a sort of a, a totem species of the church. That members were wearing leopard skins um, as a sign of worship, as a, as a, as a symbol of prestige, and um, and he began to attend various gatherings and we then realized that there was great demand for leopard skins among this particular church and um, and that, that that potentially this could explain the, the, the rapidly dwindling numbers that we were observing in the field. Fake leopard skins were always being used by the Shembi Church. Um, at that time, the quality of the fakes um, were not was not particularly good. Um, there were these were often goat skins, which just had dots painted on them or impala skins. Um, but it, it didn't mean that that there was potential that that fakes were accepted and that that Shembi. Uh, Followers could use fake skins to be able to dance, which is, again, like I said, there's great prestige with that. Um, so that's where the idea stemmed from. It was just essentially being able to develop a, a realistic, um, enough-looking fake skin, which would be accepted by the church. So what followed then were many months, in fact, years of discussions with the leadership on how best to roll this program out, um, working out which skins were preferred, by the, by the church, which patterns uh, males or female leopards, big spots, small spots. We have 15,000 of these uh, fake leopard skins which are in circulation among Shemi followers. The ultimate would be that we start seeing leopard numbers in, uh, increasing as well as the demand for these leopard skins reduced. Um, but that will take time. I mean, it's all about data collection. However, we've started a process. The people who can't afford a fur will get our fur, you know, and it will stop that person from going and acquiring that fur. So that will start reducing, you know, say the supply of leopard skins. Like someone gets a leopard, now they can't sell it anymore. It's too cheap. It's not worth it anymore. So it's just, it's the start of a much bigger conservation effort that we're going to continue with. The vital thing about this thing is cheaper. That one is costing like five grand or more. This one is cheaper. They don't charge us uh, about this thing. We get it, we get it for, uh, free. No, I 
choose this one because the, the, the original one is too expensive. So when it comes time, I will get the original one. You know, there's a lot of leopards that die, you know, and unfortunately the leopard doesn't re reproduce like other animals do. You know, it's a slow reproductive process, you know, and um, that's where we have a major problem. You know, um, a leopard in good times will produce three cubs. Out of those three cubs, maybe one will survive and become adult but only has a 50% chance of reaching its first birthday. So those are the odds we're dealing with. 